Welcome to Seabrew, Expat, by Matt Wilkie, discussing expat life in the Philippines. Taking a genuine interest in people is important in the Philippines. The reason I say this is because a lot of people like to run everybody down. Um, but also, from my own perspective, I find it fascinating what people get up to. Um, not just expats, but also Filipinos, you know, like those little banker fishing boats, you know. I want to go out, go, go fishing for the day. Chances of catching any good catch are pretty slim, but it's just interesting to do. Um, but it's pretty much everything. Because you understand people better. You understand how they work and everything else once you understand them. Um, in the same way when people are having family problems and stuff. If you spend a bit of time getting to know them, then they'll confide in you. Which also benefits you long term because you you got a real friend there. Um, but it's just so many ways. You know, from a business point of view... Um, I remember helping somebody some time back that was having some difficulties on a contract that was trying to put some stuff together, didn't fully understand what he was looking for, didn't really understand where to go to get the information. I spent a bit of time getting him in the right direction and basically said, if you need any help, just give me a shout. Um, I also took people out to the Middle East when, when they were struggling financially and with other problems. The, the fact is, those people are friends for life and the person that I help with the contracts um, is now putting stuff on my plate as a thank you now people only put themselves out that far when you often do it for them um, I've earned my respect from a lot of people already but at the same time getting that ball rolling often means investing a bit of time in those people um, it's not about selling the business it's not about selling what you're doing or whatever it's about actually taking an interest in those people um, the guy that's doing the contracting for example I knew he was getting at work at 6 a.m. and going home at 10 p.m. so while the others sit there chuckling amongst themselves saying well that's tough you know that's his problem I see it as our problem you know, as a business, we shouldn't be letting anybody get into that scenario. As a business, we should spread the load, not dump it. Um, so that was the way I looked at helping the guy out. I tried to find ways to make his job easier, uh, find solutions to problems he didn't uh, understand yet because it wasn't his field. But in the end, it reduced his workload. In the end, he remembers that when he was sinking, you're one of the few people that took an interest and helped him. Now, this goes throughout life. Uh, it's not just the Philippines, because you will find that in the Philippines, um, I like charity projects, for example, but without the word charity. <laughs> I like projects. I like helping people, you know, I'll go and paint a school room. I've donated a few computers. Um, I'm down as a benefactor for a local school. Um, because we donate there now and again food programs and other stuff but the fact is I like doing it because it's a personal thing for me um, the people respect you for it now I didn't do it to get a little badge or say look look at me I'm helping helping poor people or something I did it um, because one of my frustrations in life is people don't invest enough in education um, if people are hooked on reading at an early age, they will read throughout their lives. Um, that's why I'd like to get a library in England nearly next. But it all comes from investing in others. Um, as a person, you find you're much happier for doing it because most of my um, happiness, and to be honest, my personal happiness is actually being happy about the people around me. You know. When I throw a kid's party at Christmas, it's not me being happy that I'm having a party. I'm happy that the kids are having a good time. Because um, that might be the only Christmas present they get that year. So, for me, it's a big thing. Um, 
that's why you know I do recommend if you try to do stuff for other people you will find it has some rather interesting effects long term um, it's it's a bit like we're reading the the author of Rich Dad Poor Dad because like he said himself that he donated most when he had the least money um, now it may seem a bit bizarre in that way but it's often because he, he didn't explain how he thinks that way I'll tell you how I I think when the typhoon hit, typhoon Haiyan hit Cebu the north of the island was pretty much wiped out now that year we bought the building next door we bought the lot we got the call center up and running we bought our PCs um, we had zero debt and it actually grown significantly northern Cebu people lost everything now could I sit there in my ivory tower saying well that's hard luck or did I take the perspective that okay we had a great year if we gave everything we had um, away that we currently had financially we would still be better off than most of those people and that's how I ended up back in the UK I gave away most of the money uh, kept enough money for three months uh, basically just to so that the Philippines would take over uh, while I got some work in the UK but everything else we gave away um, from a point of my perspective is be happy for what you've got be content with what you got when you've got nothing there's always somebody with less um, as such you're not ever in the same scenario as somebody else there's always somebody worse you know some people will take it from a negative point of view yeah but there's always somebody worse yes there is but instead of griping about it be thankful for what you got you've already achieved so much already in life um, and that's why I like investing in other people I like spending time with people if somebody wants to know something I'll teach them if they want to learn something I'll teach them people were complaining well what about when you change uh, train a call center agent and they leave so what um, the majority of the guys that I originally hired for the call center had no call center experience they couldn't get in the door of a call center um, they weren't university graduates and stuff because a lot of the call centers stupidly ask for a, um, some sort of graduate for what? to tell me how to fix a modem to tell me how to process my PayPal or something well, I don't get it so what would be the worst case scenario for me? Um, that those people can get a job at the end of it it's nothing about my personal wealth the reality is every person that was in that call center could get a job out of it many of them did when we after Typhoon High and we ran it all down the majority of the staff are in other call centers now am I sitting there griping about it and moaning the answer is no the success is that we took people that had very little experience um, had no way of um, no selling skills uh, accent skills etc and we turned people that had limited opportunities into the the ability to go to any call center in Cebu um, and that's the important bit we created people we created jobs um, and that's why anybody would that worked for us would come back within an instant simply because we treat people as people and that's why you know if you're in a business, uh, if you're trying to get new business, for example, take a bit of investment in the people you're trying to contact, because sometimes you'll find that there is always something they're interested in, there's stuff they want to do, there's charity projects, there's always something that the people are genuinely, genuinely interested in. And instead of trying to sell them something, just take an interest in the person because um, you may find that's a better technique than anything you'll ever sell uh, there's a reason behind that 
people get their back up as soon as a salesperson walks in the door um, but if you take a genuine interest people take the barriers down but also if you don't push the sale you may find they actually turn around too because you're a genuine person and that that can sell more than pressure selling uh, also the sales are genuine they're not that they're not badgered somebody into it so yeah that's why I invest in people yeah I take the time you you need to enjoy life but also the best enjoyment is seeing that other people are happy thanks for watching yeah.